Hey everybody, welcome to, welcome back to the Speed Shop. I'm going to do a real quick video on how to make a battery tray for the Firebird. So, stand by and enjoy the video. Alright, so I went to Atwoods today and I uh, picked up some of this one and a quarter by one and a quarter angle iron. One eighth uh, thick. That's what I'm going to use to make my battery tray. I do not suggest buying this stuff from Atwoods though. I didn't realize how expensive it was. I think these little pieces are actually like, like 19 bucks a piece. And I can get a whole stick for like 40. That's 20 feet long, so. But uh, I didn't even think about it. I figured it wouldn't be that expensive, but I definitely suggest you go to a, a steel place, a metal place, and buy your you know stuff there in full length. But let's get started on it, get some measurements. All right, so the base of this battery measures in at nine inches by uh, a little under seven inches. So I'm probably gonna go 10 by eight for my inside dimensions for the for the cradle. So let's get those things cut. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut 45s and or cut A45 on my chop saw on the first piece. So then I can from that point I can measure out the 10 inches and the nine inches for the dimensions. Alright, so I cut the pieces out and set up a 45 on the saw over there. So I got two pieces that are 10 inches inside and eight inches on the outside, on the inside. So I'm just gotta square them up and weld them together. All right, so it's all welded up. Kinda looks like crap, but you know, whatever. Nobody's gonna see those welds. It's welded underneath mostly. So let's see how she fits with the battery. And the duct. So there you have it, so a good amount of gap around the outside so I can fit a bigger battery in there if need be. Now I just need to build a strap for it and I'll stand it off too because the trunk floor is slanted back there so it needs to be angled a little bit so I'll put some feet on some side of it and make it look better and bolt down better. Alright, so we got the basis for the uh, battery tray in there now so we just got to put feet on it so we can mount it in the car. So let's go figure out what we gotta do for that. One of the things I did is I leveled the car out a little bit more. So I brought the front end down. So that way we figure out the angle for the tray back here. It's more accurate. So basically just gonna try to get it level to where it looks good, which isn't really necessary, but I just like it to be that way. So let's get some feet on there, figure out what we gotta do. So basically I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. And you know what, I'm gonna get a level and see or an angle finder since I have one. So we can set zero. Set that on there. So basically I'm just gonna shoot for zero degrees and then figure out how much distance that is. And let me get a ruler instead of a tape measure that you can use. All right, so we're just gonna raise it up till that goes to zero and get us a measurement of how long we need to make the leg. So it looks like an inch and a half. So we're just gonna bring the front end of this up to an inch and a half taller than the back and we'll be good to go. Nice level battery tray. All right, so I was kind of going through the scrap metal I have over there making figure out what I wanna do for feet. And I realized I had this, which is a piece that I messed up on when making this. So I figure what the heck, I don't make a nice little foot so add that on there it's just it's an inch and a quarter but it's close enough that i think it'll level it out just just about right so i'm gonna go ahead and attach that to that okay so this is the layout i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and overhang it a little bit off that lip just because that way i can put the battery straight down and i have to try to tuck it up underneath the fender or the quarter panel so i'm gonna put a hole right here on each side of the frame and i'm gonna do one up here on the outside of the frame so up here so I'm just gonna make a tab, one single tab right there. And that's it, it'll be uh, ready to mount. All right, so now we have the tab back there and we have the holes marked, so we just gotta drill the holes now. So one, two, three holes. And we can bolt that down and that thing won't go nowhere. Don't have to worry about it sliding around. Another reason why I'm doing this is because a buddy of mine actually had his battery come loose one time and basically let his car on fire. It came back, shorted out on the metal of the car and started a fire, so I don't want that to happen. So we're gonna make a nice battery tray that won't let it slide around. 
All right, so as you can see, I got the bolts in there now. They're not tightened down. And uh, on the bottom side, I'm gonna use um, fender washers. So they're a little fatter and they grip the, uh, give you a little more meat for your sheet metal. And it shouldn't matter. It's not gonna tear. You have to, I mean, I have to take a serious hit for this thing to tear out of there. And it ain't gonna be like launching with, you know, 2,500 horsepower or anything and making it fall apart. So that's gonna work just fine. So now I just gotta do a mounting system to actually bolt the, or screw the uh, battery down. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. All right, so this is what I found laying around the shop here. I got this battery hold down style, the red one, which I'm gonna use. And this rubber one, but it's got the, uh, the actual screw downs that I'm gonna be using. All right, so there you have it. So I put the uh, drill holes inside there, put the, the screws in there, or the bolts, whatever you wanna call them, the tie downs. So now the battery's actually mounted in there. So I can go over to the car. Get it up in there, so my weak arm. And bam, that's what's gonna be. I'll trim these, these screws back, and these bolts back, that way they're not sticking up so high. But that takes care of my battery mount. So not too bad, huh? All right, that's gonna finish up our video on making a battery tray for the Firebird. So if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like down there. If you, uh, you know, leave a comment, let me know what you think of it. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. So thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you all Before later. Quick add on to this. This is obviously for a dry cell battery, so you don't need to worry about it being in a box and vented. So that's the reason why I'm doing it the way it is, and that's the way I've had it in the car for since I got it. So just, uh, like I said, if you do have to run a regular battery in there, make sure it's got a box and it's vented. So that's the way you gotta do it when it's in the uh, the passenger compartment of any vehicle. It has to be vented, okay? So, but like I said, this is a dry cell battery, so you don't have to worry about it. So, thanks for watching.